In this video, I already have a Windows deployment server set up, and I have an image that's already in my Windows deployment services. And what I want to do is I want to take this patch file and I want to apply it to that image so that rather than every time that image is installed, that software has to be re downloaded through Windows Update, I can apply it before that installation even takes place. Uh, this is sometimes called slipstreaming in some patches and this can be really handy especially for things like a service pack when you definitely want to all be at the same level with all of your machines and you just don't want to have to go through the lengthy process of reinstalling this particular patch again. Now the downside is there isn't a real clean and easy way to just toss all of the images of all of these patches into an install image but at least this can take care of some of the ones that you might want to do that might be kind of big. So the first thing we have here is I have in my c colon backslash adk directory I have my image, my install wim file it has to be on a writable folder and I have this patch. It's a standalone patch that was downloaded and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this image and I'm going to use a program called DISM and I'm going to mount that image into this offline folder. Now what that does is it effectively takes this WIM file and opens it up so I can dump things into it and then I'm going to save it and close it back up and put it back in that WIM file. It's kind of like extracting and then recompressing a zip file. And then this package folder I'm going to use to extract the contents of this and dump into here. So I'll have the extracted patch here and I'll have the extracted Windows image here. So what we need to do here is we need to start with a administrator command prompt. So if you hit the start key and type in CMD, right click on command prompt and run as administrator. It has to be run as an administrator. I'm going to go into my directory. I'll do a cd backslash to get back to my root and then I'll do a cd space adk to move up to my assessment and deployment kit folder. This is where I'm doing all of my testing and it keeps everything all in one place so it doesn't get all scattered around my hard drive. So the next thing I need to do is uh, what I need to do is extract this cab file. Um, so there's a way to do this with these files. This is a Microsoft update file. It's a MSU file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in Windows and actually a little trick is you can hit the tab key once you've typed in something that makes that one file unique enough. It'll type in the rest for you. So type in Win and hit tab. And then I'm going to do a slash extract colon and then c colon backslash adk to my package folder. And something blips through really quick. I don't really see what happens, but I'm going to take a look here in this package folder and there it is. I have a couple of different files. Um, some of them are cabinet files, some are text documents, etc. But anyway, that's what's in that patch. And this is the patch that I want to apply to my image. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go in, since this is a live image on Windows Deployment Services, I'm going to go into my Windows Deployment Services. And I need to go into my server and into my install images. It's in my Windows Server group. Here it is, my Windows Server 2012 R2 Server Data Center. This is the image where I'm going to apply that patch. So I'm going to disable the deployment of this image right now because I'm actually going to open it up, toss in this patch, close it back up, and then eventually I will replace the old image file with the new one that is patched. So first I disable this, and then what I'm going to do is a command called DISM. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount my image file into this offline folder. 
So the command is dism slash mount wim mount the Windows image and then I need to specify the WIM file C colon backslash ADK in my case and then it's in an image folder and it's install.wim and then there's another command that I need to put on here it's slash index 4 and the reason it's index 4 and you may notice this when you do an installation of Windows using your media there's actually four installations of Windows in this install.wim file. The first one's server standard core. The second one's server standard with a GUI. The third one's data center core. And the fourth one is data center with a GUI. The one that I actually want to manipulate here is the fourth in that list. So index equals four. And I'll show you how we can look at that here in just a second. So we'll mount this. Oops. I forgot a step. Um, I did forget a step and that step is actually where is this image going so um, the command line is missing the mount dir option this is what I forgot so I need a slash mount dir colon c colon backslash adk backslash offline is where I said that I was going to put that so I'm going to run this and this time since it didn't kick back an error right away I must have done something right what I can do is I can look in this offline folder and I can see that the base image of Windows is starting to deploy into there. What it's actually doing is mounting that image and um, extracting it out here so I could make some changes to this image while it's all opened up and exposed and then I can package it back up as an install image. So this is fairly common as far as uh, modifying these images and getting them ready for deployment because you might need to toss some more files in there or manipulate some files or make other changes. Mounting this image lets you do that. So this does take a little while. Um, a fast hard drive here does help. Hopefully it goes by pretty quickly for you. The less things you have going on in your computer at any one time, the faster this will go. Because what it has to do is it has to read a pretty ginormous file and it has to dump it over into this other directory. So it's doing a lot of reading and a lot of writing all at once. So as you can see, it's taking some time and it'll eventually make its way through. Almost there. It's almost extracted that entire installation. And it's all right here in this space. The operation completed successfully. So now maybe we wonder about how this WIM file really looks. Uh, we can do a DISM command that does a git WIM info and then my WIM file C colon backslash ADK image install.wim and then I also need to specify the index of that one. And I'm going to say index 4. I happen to know that this relates to my server uh, data center. And when I run that command, it says, here's the details. Here's all the information about it. Server data center. That's the one that I want to work with. Well, what if I had picked the wrong one? What if I had picked image 1? Index equals 1 looks like this, server standard core. Is it the same thing? No. It's actually a different, entirely different type of installation of Windows Server. It's still 2012 R2. It still has most of the same features, but it actually is an entirely different image of Windows within that install WIM. So if we did want to apply this patch, we would need to apply it to all four of the install images. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take that package and we're going to apply it. Here's that package, that patch. And we're going to apply it to this opened up install image. And we can do that here, DISM again. And I'm going to do slash image, c colon backslash adk offline. This is my offline 
uh, copy here. It's not being deployed. It's not the WIM file. This is the directory that I've mounted. And then I'm going to do a slash add package. And then the package path is c colon backslash adk package. And then this one happens to be Windows 8.1. Don't let that fool you. That's really 2012 R2 as well, since they're built off of the same base. And it's KB290154910. X64.cab. What we're actually going to do is we're going to put the cabinet file into our image. So, one last look here, make sure I've got everything typed in right. Looks pretty good to me. And we'll see if it works. What it's doing right now is it's taking that cab and it's processing that and dumping it into my image. It should go pretty quick, it's not a huge patch and it completed successfully. So now I've got that new patch built into my Windows image. I don't have to install it after the, ins in after the installation finishes. So I'm going to DISM slash commit my WIM. Commit is the same thing as saying save, really. Um, although we have to say commit in this command. Slash save doesn't work. And then the mount dir that I'm working with is c colon backslash adk um, offline. And I'm going to commit that. I'm going to save it. This takes a moment. It's another one of those uh, big input output type of processes, so it does take some time and it saves my changes. operation completed successfully wonderful and now that we've committed those changes to the image I can unmount that image I no longer want it open and exposed here I want it to toss all of those changes back into this so I can DISM slash unmount whim and the slash mount directory we have to specify where that is and slash commit. It's basically doing the same thing again here, but it's going to close that up and save it back into that install.wim file. This will take a moment because it does need to rewrite that entire file. After a couple of minutes, the operation completed successfully, and my image file is now changed. It's a different image file entirely. So what do I do with this? Well, I'm going to go back into my Windows deployment services here, and that old image is no longer the one that I want to deploy. I want to deploy this new one that has all of these changes. So I can go in and replace the image. It'll keep all my settings the same, but now I've got a slightly different, slightly newer image that I want to push out. So my file happens to live in ADK image, and it's the install.wim file. You can browse for it as well. Now, which of the images did I want? Well, I might need to use this slider here. I still wanted server data center with a GUI and here's the names, the same names that I had already and 
here's my old image file, here's my new image file. When I say next, it'll replace that. And it's just going to do a big old copy behind the scenes and put that in place. The operation is complete. The image was successfully replaced on the server, and I can say finish. Now, when I say finish, the status goes back to online because now that I've updated my image, the assumption is that I'm all set and it's ready to roll again. So right at this moment, I can use this image to deploy out my server.